dear friends, and thank you for stopping by to watch another one of our videos. Now, today we're going to deconstruct some of the things that Expat Taffy's talking about, and one of the things is these shadows here that are all going in different directions because there's another light source being used. And what about this way up there in the sky there, eh? Oh, a blue beam up there as well. Now, friends, this is not possible if that was the real moon now, is it there, eh? I don't think so, and neither does anybody else who's got any common sense. But I don't want you to take my word for it. Let's just have a listen to what expat Taffy has to say about this. All right, friends? So, without further ado, take it away, expat Taffy! Well, what about this one, Slankas? When you commented on yourself before I showed you the errors, you claimed this was a good photo of the Earth taken from the moon. And when brightened up and enlarged, look what we've got. We've got a ten-sided Earth cut out with the scissors and pasted onto a black background. And you think that was genuine taken from the moon. <laughs> good God Almighty, I have seen everything now. A ten-sided Earth, look at this now, eh? What a joke. NASA's trying to pawn this off as reality? <laughs> I don't think so, neither does anybody else. You got it, that's got any common sense. But, boy oh boy, does the sky look real different today now. Oh boy, I thought the stars were white, not green like this. <laughs> I've seen everything now. Oh, brother. Not only that, but this here lamb's all glowing green, too. <laughs> oh, my God, green. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What is this? I guess the Green Lantern must have stopped by here. Oh, these guys, how they can believe this crap. I'll never understand it. Never understand it. But if you think that's good, oh, just wait till you see the next picture. But just before that, I'm going to show you something. Now, just because Apollo is fake, well, I'm just going to show you how the mass media does it. Just by showing you this little clip here. Now, pay attention there, friends, because I don't want it to sneak by you now, all right? So let's just roll that little clip and compare what the media's got to say about a lot of things. And then think about this here picture right over here when you're watching it, all right? So let's get on with that and see what they got to say about this. Reporting via satellite with Nancy Grace, who seemed to be in the same parking lot in Phoenix. This is a Scud. You can tell it by its distinctive label. Now, when the missile is launched, the first thing you look for is the plume sticking out behind it. Now, when you detect this, you can tell it's been launched. Thank you. Yeah, show me graffiti. <laughs> Larry King show or bust. Je suis un journaliste américain. <laughs> Wolf. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love this country so much. Continue to find the community of nations presents a challenge which must be addressed. Presents a challenge which must be addressed. The member for Grindler? It is inherently dangerous to allow a country such as Iraq to allow a country such as Iraq to retain weapons of mass destruction, particularly in the light of its past aggressive behavior. Don't worry, be happy. 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 So, dear friends, don't worry, be happy. You should be happy because Apollo is going to be going down the drain along with its slack-ass character now. Isn't that right, friends? 
And speaking of women over here, hey, now this is what Slackass is doing, right? He's starting to use women's voices in his videos. And this woman over here, she kind of reminds me of that Joanne Evans, and you want to know why? Because her mouth is always open and there's nothing coming out of it. <laughs> oh, certainly is there, friends. And I think you can all get the point here. What I'm trying to say is that all these television shows get the same script and it's all passed about and purchased and repurchased and shuffled about to every single country in the world. Now you kind of get the idea of what happened with Apollo, because all these dudes did was make up the same script and passed it off to the entire world's mainstream media to be reproduced and distributed all over the world wide web of today. Well, I think that you should all understand that now, eh? Because you see how the mainstream media has taken you all to the cleaners for all these here years. Just like I've showed you. Now, how do you think Apollo could be very far behind? Isn't that right, dear friends? And that goes for that crazy cotton-picking slack-ass and that crazy rodent bunny of his. <laughs> All right there, friends, now let's get back to some more Apollo videos. Let me show you what else we can dig up on these crazy NASA lot now, right? Now, let's get on with it, please. Now, in today's video, we have a real surprise for you now, because we have some Labatt beer cans right over here, like this one here. Hey, now that's sitting over there on the so-called surface of the moon. <laughs> Oh, have you seen anything like this here, dear friends? Labatt Genuine Draft. Well, that'll be the next one we're going to find, isn't it there? But we're going to show you anyways. We're going to show you some 1950s cars and some of these other beer cans and other anomalies here that our good friend Scott Henderson has found. So without further ado, please take it away, Scott. What you have to realize is when NASA started out to go to the moon, that was their intention. Their intention wasn't to do a simulation. I mean, any any film director who set out initially to do a simulation of a moon landing, okay, would have complete control of the set, complete control of the actors, complete control of all the props and lighting effects and any atmospheric effects that they would have. That would be all planned and laid out and done. And of course, if you're going to do a series of six of them, you'd be shooting them back to back. NASA initially was going to the moon, and at some point in time, they decided that they couldn't fail. They, they had to prove that they were uh, a superior nation in the Cold War. And when they decided to do the simulation, they were using the equipment that NASA had already produced, the sets that they were practicing on, and the props as well, the, the uh, lander and the uh, experimental packages and stuff like that. And of course, anyone producing and directing this thing also had to use the astronauts as well. They weren't actors. And as a matter of fact, any, any director would want to have complete control of the cameras. They didn't have control of the cameras. The astronauts had control of the cameras as well. And this is what has happened throughout these videos and the photos, that the anomalies are there. The astronauts intentionally wanted to show the fraud. They most likely were doing this for their three fallen comrades, Grissom, Chaffee, and White, and they were documenting this in these photographs. They probably weren't intended to be released to the media at any time I mean, the initial photographs that were put out, there was maybe two or three dozen for each mission that were put up for magazines, newspapers, and other media events. And these other photographs were just simply archived, tucked away, and 25 years later, NASA wants to keep promoting their moon landing, and they started putting up the photographs online, they digitized them, put them up, and everybody looks at them and says, oh yeah, we landed on the moon. That's not what's in the photographs. What's in the photographs is the very detailed documentation of where it was actually shot, 
the equipment that was used, that it was the same equipment being used over and over again for all six missions when they were filming this. And when they weren't using it, it was just left lying outside on the ground. You can see the equipment aging with time through the six missions. If you're looking at particularly the experimental equipment, okay? and when it got so bad, then they had to replace it. Yeah, so let me ask you something, Scott. You know, this is the, the, one of the things that I found really fascinating about this is when you look at some of these photographs, I mean, it appears that they're like old cars and old pieces of cars and stuff like that. And you told me something that really kind of blew me away about where NASA had originally set up to do some of these pictures. And that was in a in Flagstaff, right? And in particular, I believe you said that it was like in a junkyard in Flagstaff. Is that right? Well, the landfill site's still, still there today. It's right on the southeast corner of Cinder Lake. And Cinder Lake is the moonscape that NASA recreated. Mm-hmm on there and that's where they were doing all the simulations that's where Farouk Albez was training the astronauts to get their timing down to familiarize them, them with the use of the equipment it only makes sense that they would use a landfill site if they were going to create something they already had the big earth moving equipment there nobody would even notice that you're doing anything even if you're flying over it it just big equipment moving dirt around so yeah. it was quite quite easy to create the the set and it's quite easy to remove it after you're done well thank you scott for stopping by and giving us the discourse on how you can find beer cans and 50s cars and 60s cars and all kinds of stuff there on so-called moon but as you can see here there's no way that anything went to any moon and that's a fact jack so, let's just get on to the next little clip here. Now, this is a real good one, folks, because this is just goes to show you how NASA works. Now, this one here, they're going to end up raiding a grandmother while she's having her dinner or lunch inside of a Denny's restaurant. So, watch this one here. It makes me sick. Oh, and it will make you sick, too, after you see what's coming. So, let's roll that clip, please. A NASA SWAT team performs a sting operation and raids a 75-year-old grandmother, forcing her to defecate on herself in order to steal a piece of moon rock that was given to her by her late husband who worked as an Apollo 11 engineer. <sighs> well, you can't make this stuff up, and when I saw these news reports hit the web, I didn't believe it at first. I had to research around and make sure that I wasn't reading from some sort of fake news website, you know, or a joke website or something like that. But no, this is true, and it's so crazy that it's almost unbelievable that this nice older woman by the name of Joanne Davis, 75 years old, had fallen on some hard financial times after raising grandchildren and following her daughter's death and her son's illness. So she began to think of extra ways to make some money. And that's how this all started. So her husband, who has since passed away, was a man by the name of Robert Davis, who was an Apollo 11 engineer. He worked during the moon landings for NASA. And while he was there, he had saved and given to his wife a paperweight that featured a very tiny little crumb of moon rock as well as a little piece of heat shield from the spacecraft itself. And so these moon artifacts and memorabilia were left to Joanne after her husband passed away. And like many struggling and falling on hard times, she thought to herself, well, maybe I can find someone who would appreciate this moon rock and this little piece of heat shield, and I can maybe earn a little bit of money for it. So, she asked around, trying to see if anybody would be interested, and, and she didn't really get much reply. She contacted local auction houses, and even they weren't really interested, which is strange to me. But being a normal person with common sense, she decided, well, I'll call NASA, I'll get in touch with them, and I'll see if they might know of anybody who would like to buy the pieces. And so, unfortunately, 
that turned out to be the biggest mistake that she could have made. And instead of investigating and simply emailing Joanne back and telling her that it was illegal to sell moon rocks, which she didn't know and I didn't know and everyone I've spoke to didn't know uh, that it was illegal to sell moon rocks, but apparently it is. So instead of telling her that, NASA set up an elaborate sting operation to nail this poor old woman who in their eyes was some sort of elderly international moon rock smuggler, the elderly queen of the moon rock underworld. And so they went along with her and she was excited that she was finally going to get some financial relief. And so when she and her new husband went to a local Denny's restaurant, she was met by a host of federal agents and police officers who forcibly restrained her and her husband uh, treating them uh, as if they were some sort of Mexican cartel leader that had just been captured. This is a 75-year-old woman we're talking about here, uh, who, by the way, lost control of her bladder during the fray, and so was humiliated further. She was forced to stand in the parking lot of the restaurant, pants soaked, and made to answer questions by the federal agents about this tiny little rice-sized piece of the moon. According to Joanne, the agents kept saying, quote, you will be going to federal court, you will be going to federal jail. And by the way, Mrs. Davis actually worked at NASA as well at the same time as her husband. And so here she is, 50 years later, being manhandled by the goons of the same organization that she worked for because someone on the inside made a mistake and wanted that moon rock back. And according to their lawyer, NASA, quote, did it in a way that would humiliate her. And, um, you know, I, I can only say that once again, NASA never fails to surprise me. And, um, yeah. This just goes to show the true nature of these space agencies. You think they're all kitty cats and nice public figures and handshakes and, and putting a flag on the moon. No, these guys are thugs. These guys cover up stuff. These guys lie. Now, dear friends, doesn't that make you absolutely sick? Oh, now how could a NASA come along and take what her husband has given to her all them years ago? Now, that's real bad. And you want to know the reason why NASA did it? It's because they have to get all their moon rocks back because they were all fake, just like this one is here. You see, that's the one that they were trying to get back off of the grandma now, right? And they know that if they don't get back every single one of them moon rocks, that they're going to really be in the who's a gal this time because they're going to find out that it's all fake. But NASA already knows they're all fake. That's the reason why they're trying to get them back, you see. Now, can you just imagine the big stir and the big stink that would cause if NASA ended up not getting all these here fake moon rocks back that were made in a kiln in Japan? <laughs> oh my god, it would start World War III now, wouldn't it there, friends, eh? Oh, but you can't tell Jeff Dave that, you can't tell Mysterio Mystery that, you can't tell that Luke S that, and you can't tell that crazy bunny of slack asses that either. <laughs> Because those dudes are so arrogant and so blind they can't even see their hand in front of their cotton picking faces anymore. Oh, terrible, terrible thing. I mean, can you really believe that, dear friends? These NASA dudes busting uh, it's almost 80 year old grandmother now? Holy frickin' smoke. Who does that ever take the cake, eh? <laughs> Oh, yep, fingers, good old NASA for you, hey, eh? Oh, they're always going to come around there and they're going to end up cleaning the whole society out pretty soon now, hey, eh? we don't stop it. Now, this really got to be put to a stop because NASA cannot go around harassing the elderly like us. Now, isn't that right there, friends, eh? That's terrible. Holy freaking cow. I've never seen anything like this in my life, eh? Wowie, that takes the cake, and that takes the biscuit too now, don't it there, friends, eh? Now, we gotta do something to put a stop to this, because this is absolute bullshit. 
Don't you go telling us, slack ass, that this here is all just, well, it's all made up and it's all in our heads and that this here moon rock that was built in a, a kiln in Japan all just perspective because this not perspective here, mate. This here was made in a kiln in Japan and NASA knows it. So they're going to try to get every one of these here rocks back so that the public can't test them because if the public does, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh, those NASA's are going to end up in the who's gal along with those dudes that ended up robbing the train last week. <laughs> They certainly did now. Well, friends, I just noticed something about this here rover again in this here 20341 photo. As you can see, they're behind the rover. And once again, guess what we have, eh? Oh, there's no tire tracks again over here now, isn't it there, friends? <laughs> see, NASA, you got caught lying again. Now today, we have a special guest for you, and his name is Scott Henderson, and he's going to be telling you about all this crap here that he found on the lunar surface too, you know, like alternators and spark plugs and all kinds of good stuff down there now, hey, isn't it there, friends? And he's also found the place where all this crap and all this junk was actually thrown into, where all these Apollo missions were supposedly made. <laughs> Oh, that's a real good one because it certainly is going to show you that you just can't photograph stuff without spark plugs and Bob the Builder's toolbox and all oh, these here alternators from them cars there that you're going to be seeing pretty soon. So, without further ado, take it away, please, Scott Henderson. Now that, I'm not sure, that looks like an old... Indian head. Indian head or something, yeah. It's painted. Yeah. Okay. Very and you see stuff. how the astronauts have shown it to you? Right mm -hmm. off the top of the handle? Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you want to go looking for stuff, just let the astronauts point it out to you. Yep. Now, obviously, I'm sure a lot of people will come back and say, wow, you guys over at Globebusters really have a vivid imagination seeing all this stuff in this. But... Uh, you know, to that I would say maybe to some degree you have to stretch your imagination a little bit, but then there's other stuff that is so blatantly wrong and that cannot be denied that, you know, at this point I think it's a pretty much a foregone conclusion that what we're seeing here was not shot on the moon. And, you know, the likelihood of it being shot in a landfill is exponentially higher, especially with all the rain, mud alternator parts, old cars. <laughs> I mean, you know, what makes more sense ultimately when you really get past the idea that we are being deceived here and what we're being shown here is a load of bollocks, then suddenly it's not so such a stretch of the imagination when you put it in perspective and realize where NASA was shooting this stuff. And they were using this stuff for training shots, right? Exactly, that's, that's where they were doing all their training. Well, thanks, Scott, for stopping by and showing us all these anomalies that are on the surface of the moon set. Nothing more, nothing less. And in fact, you're right there because this here was taken in an industrial waste dump. And here's the evidence right down there, too. Now, what the hell's that doohickey doing there on the surface of the moon if it's the moon now? Isn't that right, friends? <laughs> Now, there's no way that any of this stuff should be on a real moon now. Now, come on, give me a break here. And why would this bag be just thrown all the way under there, underneath the rocket belt? Which, in fact, this here is nothing more than a bucket that some dude has just taped or glued onto the bottom of this here prop. I can tell you that right now. And not only that, but come on, I mean, cars, spark plugs, alternators, good God almighty, we're going to find Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny up here pretty soon, now aren't we there, friends? <laughs> oh, my dear God, just keeps getting better and better now, doesn't it there, friends? And I, if I was you, I would take this United States of America down because that's a disgrace to the country now, isn't it there, friends? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. It should be over here. It should be taped to the garbage dump where it came from. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
Oh, I tell you one thing, man. This Apollo, I'm sorry there, friends, but this Apollo just makes me laugh harder and harder every time I see shit like this. <laughs> just about made me fall off my chair there, I can tell you that right now. Oh, my dear God. Well, anyways, that's our spiel for today. And all you pans out there like Jeff Dave and all that mysterious mystery and that screwball crew, you know, the dude that keeps getting screwier every second of the day? <laughs> By the way, Screwy, hey, why don't you go and phone Wag off there and ask him if that you'll take your lousy guitar playing, eh, and take it to his cousin to see if you can get into his band. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, that's a real bad guitar playing there. Screwy, crewy, isn't it now there, eh? Oh, it's no wonder you're not in a band because nobody would take you playing that shit like that. <laughs> That's no wonder all you do is sit around sending those viruses because you got nothing better to do with your crazy, useless life now, do you there, mate? <laughs> a lot of fun here today because those bastards ended up getting six thousand dollars off of my visa card and there's no way i'm letting that get away the only thing i can do is laugh at these crazy nasa numbskulls because they're trying to get us off of youtube well i'll tell you what mate it ain't gonna work now is it there hey eh? is you just wait we're gonna get you guys back you know what haven't you ever heard that karma's a bitch when she comes around calling for you isn't that right there Jeff, Dave, and screwy, crewy, and your old crewy of crazy nasolytic bandits now, eh? Oh, my dear God, anyways. So, oh, that's our video for today. That's, uh, you guys all out there. Have the rest of the good week. And from expat Taffy and myself, you guys have a great day out there now. Mr. Strange out.